Hi, I'm Gary DePaul. I'm in the Charlotte area and a member of the Charlotte chapter. I'm also a member of the Tampa Bay chapter and I am now leaving as the chair of the, of the chapter's partnership committee. My first exposure to HPT was at the University of Illinois in Ur Urbana-Champaign in the Department of Educational Leadership, Organization and Leadership. At that department, I worked with several people, including one person in particular who worked with the American Academy of Orthopedic Surgeons. In, with his role with the orthopedic surgeons, he modeled for us a lot of the HPT consulting practices. For example, he would go into a particular hospital where they would be having trouble with a performer. Usually it's a resident who is having some difficulties learning the principles of what they're trying to do. And he would use a lot of the HPT principles to analyze what was going on to get at the root of the problem. For example, it would typically start with one resident and that was the problem to no, it's not the worker in this case, it was actually the work environment and other factors. So it, it was a fantastic introduction into HPT and learning about what the standards are without knowing what HPT was. So that was my first exposure. My biggest influences have been with a couple of people, and I'll just name two of them, I could name a lot. Bandura was a large influence for me, as well as a guy named James Farmer. Both of them talked a great deal about modeling with articulation and something called cognitive apprenticeship. And I've used those principles to radically change how various organizations operated and ultimately improve revenue. In one particular instance, for example, I used their models to introduce a new way of selling and as a result of that, in the very next quarter and in the subsequent quarters, sales increased about 78 to 80 percent depending on which quarter. So it was a, it was a huge uh, influence for us. My 30 second elevator speech for on HPT, I'm going to focus it around the work I'm doing right now. I'm currently working at Lowe's as a manager, so it would be something like this. At, uh, at Lowe's, I look at all the factors that influence the behavior of our associates in appliances, cabinets and countertops, and plumbing. And from looking at these factors, I come up with recommendations that I present to a governance body, and we take those recommendations prioritize them, take some out, may, maybe add some in, and go out and do work. So that, and then we, from the recommendations, if I was going to add another step to that, is we change the behaviors of those associates to ultimately improve the outcomes of what we want to achieve, whether it's cost savings or increasing in revenue, and then ultimately impacting the business and repeat customers and add-on sales, etc. So that is the sort of like my elevator speech. My current or focus right now is on my learning is all about working with executives and how I can do that better. So by doing by working with other people and helping champion them to be able to talk with executives has been a great influence on me just by doing that type of work and currently at the ISPI conferences, I'm presenting on that and listening to how other people have uh, learned and did similar approaches. So that's um, an HP term that I like to define is hey, vicarious learning. And this goes back to Bandura. And I'll explain it in two ways. And I've used this principle several times. First way is think of, think of a child going up to a burner in a house, in a kitchen, and the child touches the burner and burns the hand. Another child watching sees this and says, huh, I'm not going to touch the burner. The second child doesn't ever touch the burner, but learns vicariously by observation. And vice versa, when we've used vicarious learning in the business world to show when someone, when we have a someone who is 
starting a new um, a new training and they're getting benefits for it and people see that hey this person's benefiting by doing something different and they want those same outcomes then that's another example of vicarious learning so I'm Gary DePaul and thank you